Okay, you're on. Hi, everybody. I'm Amanda. This I'm is Kevin. Kevin. <laughs> we're with A. Smith Gallery, and we're here today to talk about Sanctuary, which is the call for entry and the, um, the images that are up right now in our online online in our online exhibition. I'll get it out in a minute. On the website. On the website, All yes. Right. It is an online exhibition. Yes, it is. Anyway, Sanctuary will be up till, oh, like mid-April. And so we're going to, um, today we're going to go through all the images. Um, the juror for this was Kevin. I was? Yes, you were. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that. Oh, you knew that. <laughs> so um, let's talk about that for you. Well, first bit. I want to thank everybody that entered. And we got a bunch of really good images. Did. And uh, so... Well, that, I mean, one thing that I was struck by when I was going through all these images as they come in, I, I look at all of them, um, <clears throat> the different interpretations of sanctuary. Mm -hmm. um, what I think sanctuary didn't really apply to some of the images that I got. And what they thought was sanctuary. They would think mine was not that's sanctuary. Right. So, and, and that's the whole idea of the... Uh, the way we do the calls, we're putting the one word theme out there is so that people can interpret it the way they wish. And they and we they hope do. that they'll be creative in their interpretations. Absolutely. So there. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well then let's just start looking at them. All right. And see what people thought. So we're going to screen share. Okay, I think we're getting there. I think that's the logo. I think we're there. Okay, you ready for the first image? Yeah. Okay, so first up we have Aubrey Guthrie. Aubrey lives in Hearst, Texas. And this particular image is called Window Dreams. Nice shot, Aubrey. Yeah, that is a nice shot. I like that a lot. I, I, that's my sanctuary. Mm -hmm. um, then we have an image by Bill Pokenhorn. Bill lives in Calexico, uh, California. Calexico. Calexico, California. Sorry. And the title of this is Farmhouse. I really like this one. I like that too. Very it actually cool. reminds me of the valley down here in Texas. Yeah, it does. A lot. So this, this is beautiful. Um, this is by, I'll get it in a minute. Hang on. Uh, sorry, uh, Bob Dep Depsky, I knew that. Uh, and the title of this is Sanctuary. This is um, a silver gelatin print. And Bob had some words about this image that he'd like to share with And me. this image is very familiar to me as a kid, or in general, growing up and fishing in Galveston Bay. I've seen that, that scene many times. Mm -hmm. My submission, aptly named Sanctuary, has always been a special image for me. I clearly remember tracking this sailboat across the horizon as it was trying to outrun a late summer thunderstorm. Barely visible to the far left of the image is a lighthouse that marks the harbor that would provide the craft eventual refuge. I watched in awe as the storm dissipated and the sky opened up to give safe passage to the small boat. I wish that I could have witnessed this spectacle from the perspective of the boat's captain. Better yet, would have been the chance to capture their expression of relief upon experiencing this incredible fortune. I waver between naming this image either refuge or safe, safe harbor or sanctuary. The near divine intervention that I witnessed convinced me that this deserved a title with a religious connotation. It is rare that I see an exhibition come along where the theme matches my creative inspiration so perfectly. I'm so satisfied that others can relate to this image as well. Thanks again for letting me share this with others. Well, no, thank you. Yeah, that's that's really that's beautiful. A wonderful shot. This image, I, I love this image too. This is by Brooke T. Ryan. Um, Brooke lives in Casanova, New York. And the title of this is Beach Path at Dusk. And that's very familiar also. It is very familiar. And um, yeah, we had a lot of beachy stuff going on here. Yeah. Um, this is part of the 27. I, I love everything about that. Colors, the sky, all good. Cynthia Herat. <clears throat> Cynthia now lives in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, <clears throat> the title of this is A Bar in the Desert, and it's a silver gelatin print. That, there's so many 
different ways to read this image, which is one of the reasons I, I like it so much. And especially since we live in Texas and have had experience across the border or down on the border. So the idea of the bar as sanctuary is, uh, it makes sense in, in, in a number of ways. So good job, Cynthia. Yeah. And her next image, she has two in this exhibit. This is called Texas Women Hall, and it is part of the 27. And again, you could read that in different ways, yeah. especially with what's going on now at the border. So that that's a very, very uh, uh, loaded image there. Since you used to live in Texas and recently moved to Albuquerque. That's right. Yeah. Nice shot. <laughs> so here we have an image by David Court. It's called... Oh boy, it's a swamp in Florida. Emocali, I think. Emocali swamp I think so. in Florida. And he does live in Florida. He lives in Naples, Florida. That's a beautiful image. See, now that makes me think of mosquitoes. It does. <laughs> and that is not my sanctuary, <laughs> but that's a beautiful image. It is. <laughs> so here we have a couple of images by Dennis Chamberlain. Uh, Dennis lives in Corrales, New Mexico. This particular one is called Gateway to the Secret Garden. And that has to be in New Orleans, at least the house. I love yeah, that. Yeah, probably. Yeah, the, yeah I love right. that image. I love that too. Yeah. I love the colors. They look really beautiful together. So this image um, actually is in the 27, and it's called Suspended in Peace. Now, that would be one heck of an experience right there. I would like to do that. Maybe I'll get that for you for Christmas. You got a birthday coming up. Oh, okay. <laughs> a wonderful shot. Yeah, it is. <clears throat> this image is um, from Dominic Lepio. And uh, Dominic lives in Starksville, Mississippi. And the title of this is Pause. Anybody that has had a <laughs> favorite pet dog will certainly understand and appreciate that image. Yeah, he, everything he entered was in the circle format, which I, I was pretty, I, I really like that. Yeah. Yeah. So this one is by, I'm going to get it in a minute, Enough Steckler. Um, she lives in Israel and Lot Israel. And the title of this is Untitled. And she did write a piece about this. It's a beautiful image. It is a beautiful image. As an environmental artist, my mission is to capture the pressing issues facing our planet today and raise awareness of them through photography. I aim to evoke emotions and provoke thought in the, in the viewers and push them to think about their impact on the environment. By capturing the beauty of nature and juxtaposing it against the harsh realities of pollution, deforestation, and climate change, I hope to evoke a sense of urgency and responsibility. Through photography, I aim to describe the delicate balance between humanity and nature. I believe that art has the power to cross language barriers <clears throat> and reach people on a deeper, deeper level, allowing them to connect with the issues at hand. Every piece I create is made carefully, paying attention to details and symbolism. I draw ins inspiration from the natural world, incorporating elements such as endangered species and polluted landscapes. By presenting these environmental challenges in a striking visual way, I aim to strike viewers and encourage them to take action. My ultimate goal as an environmental artist is to ignite a collective consciousness and foster a sense of responsibility towards our planet. I believe that by raising awareness through art, we can spark change and create a sustainable future for generations to come. Wonderful. Yeah. That's, that's, that's beautifully said. We need said. more of that. That's, that's wonderful. wonderfully said. You know what I'm struck by? This looks like Texas. I mean, it does I'm, I'm like pretty it. sure it's not Texas. No, but, but it does kind of look yeah. like Texas. The color is great. Mm -hmm. So <clears> this <throat> image is by Elizabeth Wood. <clears throat> Elizabeth lives in West Vancouver, uh, British Columbia, Canada. And this is called Mosaic Refuge. And I interpreted this to be somebody taking sanctuary in their imagination. Okay. Excellent. Well, thank you. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Okay, Fern Neeson. Uh, Fern lives in Cambridge, Massachusetts. This is called Sanctuary Four. And this is kind of a literal interpretation that I'm 
Sure, would probably be in a sanctuary of sorts. Yeah, we have a few literal interpretations. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I just love this image too. You know, you did a good job, Kevin. I like a lot of these. Thank movies. you. <laughs> so this is um Can part I get of the rays. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> this image is by uh Frederic Hervé, who lives in Paris, France. And this is entitled Untitled. It is part of the 27. And her, her whole entry was uh, diptychs similar to this mm -hmm. that um, were just, I don't know how you made up your mind. They were all beautiful. I really, really like this one. Yeah. I mean, what's interesting, it's also, you know, uh, at first glance, it doesn't appear to be, but it's also a literal interpretation. There's a the church there, the sanctuary. Very well done. Yeah. Which, which brings to mind a lot of these people have websites and the websites are on our website and the slideshow. And it's, it's, it's fun to go and look at all the work that they've done. Go check it out. So this, uh -oh, I know this is Jerry Schonkweiler and I'm out of order here, guys. <laughs> or I lost it. Anyway, Jerry lives somewhere in California. I forgot where. And this is called Perry Ch Prairie Chapel. It's just an incredibly well done photograph. I mean, it's beautiful. He told me he went back there. Uh, it burned down. Oh, it's uh, not there anymore. Oh, no. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a good thing that he got a shot of yeah, it. Yeah, I looked up the down. shadows and the sky. It's all yeah. really well done. Very nice. Thank you, Jerry. Okay. This is by, um, yeah, Hillary Houston Batchelder. Uh, it's called Cover. And Hillary lives in New York. So we're obviously looking at the sanctuary of the sea there. So hopefully that horseshoe crab is headed back out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice image. So we got a couple of images here by, no, I think we just have one. I'm sorry. Um, Honey Walker. No, nope, there's two. There's two. <clears throat> this particular one is called Follow the Light. Honey lives in London. And those cows are going home. Boy, it's cold out there. It's just a, it's a wonderful, wonderful image. It's the, the light on the on the porch or whatever on that house is what makes that shot. Yeah, that's that's where the sanctuary yeah, is. Well, I'd love to be <laughs> tre trekking across that snow field there. It'd be wonderful. And this one, this is just beautiful. It's called I Will Nurture You. Yeah, wow. Yeah, that red just kind of hits you in the face. Yeah, it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. Good job. Thank you, honey. Um, Howard Rankin, another UK person. He is from uh, Rayleigh, Essex, uh, United Kingdom. And this is called Inner. It is part of the 27. So the way I interpreted that, that was a Japanese, probably religious site of some sort. And right. it looks like a reflection in some water but it's just it's really beautiful the colors and the way it's done yeah nice job Howard does a lot of manipulating with his images so nice job there's some things going on there so Jamie Latish Jamie lives um in uh, College Station Texas I know that uh this is called soul saving and that's about as Texas as you can that's get. about as Texas and literal as you can get I love it <laughs> yeah yeah. Jamie actually is really, really wonderful at hand colored photographs. That's she what is. she's doing now. Good job. Now, this is Sanctuary, and it is entitled Sanctuary. Yeah. This is by Jane Feely. Um, it is part of the 27. Jane lives in Par Highland Park, Illinois. And she did have some words to say about this. I made this image on July 5th, 2022. The day will always stay in my mind. It was the day after a 21-year-old armed with a semi-automatic rifle opened fire on the annual Independence Day parade in my hometown of Highland Park, Illinois. Seven people were killed and 48 injured during the attack. I was not at the parade that day. I was on a plane from London with my family. The first we knew of the attack was when we landed in Chicago that afternoon, turned on our phones and picked up countless messages from anxious friends hoping we were safe. But the shooter remained at large and police activity in the area meant we could not return to our home. Instead, we checked into a hotel for the night. 
Jet lag woke me early the next morning and I picked up my camera as my therapy. It was it was such a difficult situation to process. That morning, that anonymous hotel room felt like our safe place, our sanctuary, if you will. From the unthinkable, permanently changed reality we were about to return to. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wonderful. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. Thank you, Jane. Um, Jeff. Jeff she she we <laughs> I'll get it right. Um, Jeff lives in Chicago, Illinois. And this particular image is part of the 27, and it is entitled An Irish Pub in Dublin. And boy, can I relate relate to that because the pub has been my sanctuary numerous <laughs> times throughout life. Yeah. Of course, we don't call them pubs here. <laughs> no, we don't, but you can if you want to. Yeah, that's great. I love that so much. The light's yeah. so wonderful. And yeah. The way you got the little haziness over here. Yeah. He's got on tweed. Yeah. It's very Irish. And this one is called The Altar at Grand. Abazi de Saint Saint Atimo. Yeah, that sounds good. That's a beautiful image. Beautiful image and, and another little interpretation. Yes. Very nice photograph. Thank you, Jeff. Jeff is a wonderful photographer. He is. So then we have um Joni Lore. And Joni lives in where do you live, Joni? West Roxbury, Massachusetts. And this is called Covenant of Christ. Another liberal, uh, Lib literal. Literal, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, part of what attracted me this to this image of the, is the complexity of it and the colors. I mean, it's just a... It's a perspective. It's wonderful, yeah. yeah, it's, it's, yeah. A, it's a little... Tilted. Yeah. So this image um, is by Julie Williams Kirshnan. And Julie lives in, I'll get that in a minute, Medford, Massachusetts. Um, she wrote a piece about this, Kevin. This is her artist thing, but this is a, an entire body of work she's got, part of it, you know. And well, of body of work. and the reason I chose this photograph is I knew there had to be a story behind it. Okay. And, and thankfully, I was right. <clears throat> The Threshing Place is a series of photographs made with paper figures that my mother used to illustrate Bible stories to children. These figures would be put on felt backdrops representing biblical landscapes as the story was told. By arranging and photographing parts of this teaching archive in new context, I am rediscovering these characters and finding new, revised, and relevant meanings. Raised as a fundamentalist and evangelical Christian, where the answers came from one source and questioning that authority was strongly discouraged, I am now a, wondering and a wandering and wondering soul. I am using this body of work as an inquiry into what is represented and taught in the faith, what is retold and remembered, and what is investigated and revised. The title, The Threshing Place, is a reference from the Book of Ruth in the Old Testament, and the threshing place is where the wheat gets separated from the chaff. This is a symbolic reference to the process of discerning where truth remains for me. The questioning is the journey. The questioning is the answer. Wonderful. Wow. Well, well written. Yeah, and a very creative project. Thank you. So another literal interpretation. Right. It's, this is Lawrence Manning's. Yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful. It language. is. It's called Church Study um, Version 1. Yeah. And he's from Nampa, Idaho. Now, where is that? I think he told me, which is the other thing that's, that's amazing about this photo, that photography was not allowed in there. So he just kind of offhandedly shot that from the hip. Handheld. Hiding his camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, well done. And this one is part of the 27. It's called Safety. That's also Lawrence, right? It's also Lawrence, yes. Yeah. And it's that... What grabbed me about this is the the it, it appears to me anyway as if somebody laid a photograph on top of a watercolor. I love that background mm -hmm. you've got there. Lawrence has a thing about birds. He does. <laughs> Crows. Yep. Um, this image <clears throat> got, received the Jurors Award. That's right. This is by Lev L. Spiro. Uh, Lev lives in Los Angeles, California. He did get the Jurors Award as part of the 27, and it's entitled The Secret. There's 
I just love this image. But the, the two main reasons I picked it is I love the painterly quality of it, but it also has strong uh, references to my youth. It reminds me of uh, different wallpapers that you would see back oh. then. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, especially in, in particular one restaurant I can remember as a kid. Hmm. So well done. Yeah, nice image. Now we have an image by Lieben Neerink. Um, Lieben lives in Belgium. Um, this is called Walking in the Storm, and it is part of the 27. And there's kind of a mystery of this image. Is he running away from the sanctuary or to the sanctuary? You better get home because there's a storm coming. Yeah. I love all that wishy. Yeah. Going on. So this is by Linda Briskin. This is called Beckoning. Uh, it is part of the 27. Linda lives in Palm Springs, California. Does it snow like that in Palm Springs? I don't think so. I don't know. Anyway. Beautiful shot. She had a, a little bit to say about that. It's right. <laughs> oh, it's just going to tell us where it's from. Beckoning was taken on a snowy day on the Diamond Lake Trail in Ontario, Canada. Yeah. Sepia opens a portal to the solitary calm and compelling quiet of winter space and the invitation. Sanctuary is, sanctuary is down at the end of that trail there. Yeah, someplace warm. Nice. See, snow is not sanctuary to me. I either. think the choice of sepia <laughs> is kind of unusual, but it, it works wonderfully. It does work. Yeah. Yeah. So here we go without any snow. Um, Lisa Miller, she is from La Jolla, California. And this is part of the 27 and the title is Into the Glooming. And to me, that just represented a place of contemplation. Yeah, that water is so still. And then it, it has somewhat of a Japanese aesthetic with the, the curve mm. of that tree. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. Marcy Tilton. Marcy got several into this um, exhibit. Marcy lives in Cape Junction, Oregon. The title of this one. Oh, boy. Let me find it, Kevin. Kitchen Sink. How could I? Yeah, it's that. Um, it's part of the twenty-seven. She has a series of her kitchen sink mm -hmm. that are just great. I love this. So was that tongue in cheek, or was that what? Did she really mean that's her sanctuary? Um, I think she meant it was her sanctuary. I think she did. I love that. I mean, the flowers, and <laughs> she likes her kitchen. She photographs it all the time. She must like it. It's hers also. This is hers also. This particular one is called uh, Morning. It is for the 27, and we did talk to her about this, and that's her sister. Yeah. So that, I love this. And it's just a, uh, it's a very recognizable image, no matter who you are. Yeah. like yeah. it a lot. Me too. And she's got one more. This is called Nook. So I think this is in Paris, I want to say. I think it was. Yeah. yeah. So that's obviously, a, she's, she's getting away from the crowd. And playing on her. And to have a cigarette. I think she's having a cigarette, yeah. And, and an yeah. iPad. <laughs> very, very good. Yeah. <clears throat> so um, here we have, I think, three images by uh, Melina Meza. Um, this particular one, and we have a few words about all this too. This one is called Hiding. It is part of the 27. That is a beautiful image. Do we have, we have some? some we others? do, but you want to go through them? or okay. Yeah. Um, this one is called True Nature. It's part of the 27, and it just got the Director's Award. Wonderful shot. Yeah, it is a wonderful shot. The expression's perfect. Yeah, I like that a lot. Black and white, all good. And this one, this is beautiful, too, uh, Yosemite Dream. Yeah, yeah, very nice. So she has just a little bit about each one of them. The Yosemite one is from Yosemite on a morning when they were doing controlled burns, which gives it an unusual color. The hiding and the true nature are from one Brighton Bush Hot Springs in Oregon near Salem. I highly recommend folks take a visit if they are anywhere near there. <laughs> Very nice. Very good. Thank you, Melina. Cool. Then Michael Bellin. Um, Michael lives in Fresno, California. This is part of the 27, and obviously it's a Polaroid. It's uh, entitled, untitled, uh, Millerton Lake, California, 2023. 
And again, that represents uh, to me a place of uh, contemplation. I like yeah, that. It's beautiful. I love blue. So this is Michael Duncan. Um, it's entitled Forest. And Michael lives in Norman, Oklahoma. Another beautiful image. It is. Sanctuary down there in the light. What's in that light? I don't know. But we want to go find out, don't we? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. And then we have another Michael. You, you picked a lot of Michaels in this show. This is Michael uh, Benzinza. Michael lives in Elmhurst, Illinois. And this is called Eminence. It is part of the 27. Wow. And, and it's just, it's perfect. You can, you can just feel the college kid coming home or the soldier coming home or the, <laughs> you know, daughter coming home. Somebody's coming home. Somebody's coming That's home. That's definitely a sanctuary. Yeah. So this image is by Michael Pointer. Michael lives in Wichita, Kansas. And the title of this image is Between Storms 3. So I obviously don't know the didn't know the story behind this, but it appears to me to be the the sanctuary of a homeless person or 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 them. But yeah, he he had a series of these. So sanctuary nonetheless. Yeah. Um, thank you, Michael. So next we have an image by Parrish Dobson. Parrish lives in Belmont, Massachusetts. And I wish my living room had that view. I'd like to spend the afternoon there. Um it's called Always the View. That's just amazing. Very nice. Just beautiful. I love this too. Um, this is by Phil Lewenthal. It's called Patience. And I think that's because of all those little birds sitting up there being patient. He lives in Lafayette, California. And he, he photographs this particular coastline all the time. This he is beautiful body work. And that's obviously a sanctuary for those. I think they're pelicans. Yeah. It's a pelican sanctuary. Beautiful. Very cool. <clears throat> so, Renee Lynn. Renee lives in Santa Fe, New Mexico. This is called Safe Heaven. This is part of the 27. Safe Haven. Haven. Safe I'm sorry. <laughs> it could be heaven. Yeah. <laughs> and she has a little bit to say about that. Safe Haven portrays the sandhill cranes that find refuge in New Mexico during the winter. They are one of the oldest bird species with fossils dating back 2 million years. In a blend of photographic realism and artistic abstraction, the crane's essence transcends ordinary perception and becomes a symbol of our profound and sacred bond with the natural world. Very, very nicely said. Yeah. However, since I didn't know that story, yeah. When I was picking this, to me, the sanctuary in here was for the artist producing the work. Hmm. So as art, as a sanctuary. Hmm. Okay. Thank you. I'll accept that. Okay. <laughs> <clears> okay, <throat> hey, this is by Robin Z. Boger. Robin lives in, where does she live, Kevin? Massachusetts. Yeah, somewhere up there. Newton, Massachusetts. And this is her dog. And the title of this is Morning Reverie Number Two. And she has a few words to say about this. At 4 a.m. <clears throat> Excuse me. At 4 a.m. I started channeling Nellie. She could have picked a better time, but I guess she was just inspired. It's her first haiku, and she wanted to add it as text to accompany her image <laughs> in the upcoming gallery show. <laughs> If y'all don't know Robin, she is she is a spectacular <laughs> wordsmith and wonderful photographer. So here's here's Nellie's haiku entitled Nellie's Song. Summer sweet smells in the canopy, squirrel sounds, life is good. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> and this is taken in a park down the street from her from her house. And it definitely is is her sanctuary. And Nellie's. And Nellie's. Or were you talking about Nellie? Both of them. <laughs> okay. So here we have a couple of images by Ronald Butler, who lives in New York, New York. And I love this image. This one, he wrote about these, by the way. Here's his stories. So this particular one is in the 27, and it is called uh, Aleatoric. Am I saying that right? Aleatoric. 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 Yeah. 030413. Yeah. So... Most 
men would reckon, well, most anybody that grew up in the <laughs> 60s and the 70s would, would recognize this image. How, how many young, young, uh, hormonal driven, anxiety ridden young boys sat in their rooms and played rock and roll or, or whoever? Oh. on a turntable so you don't know because <laughs> you weren't a young um, anxiety ridden no young boy okay <laughs> anyway that, that that was part of my sanctuary as a, as a kid all right for many years i participated in daily art prompt exercises hosted by annex art society in rhode island nurtured and led by wayne quackenbush in this daily exercise the participants are given a word phrase quote etc to inspire the rule, which I broke repeatedly, was to create something in five to ten minutes without overthinking it. I've used the prompts for curation, poetry, art, various forms of photography, and even 30-second movies. In March of 2013, I had just become aware of the word aleatoric, which means chance or randomness, and its usage in art and music. I decided to randomly associate the prompts assigned for that march with new images using a 35 millimeter camera. I made digital flash cards using my favorite font and displayed them on my computer screen where I photographed the prompts out of order. I then reloaded the film and spent the next few days double exposing anything that caught my eye, not knowing the pairings that would result. Out of two rolls of film, I got the 31 usable images. <clears throat> Excuse me, I, out of the two rolls of film, I got the 31 usable images I needed. Three of them rose above the occasion, and this image has been the most popular of the series. That's very cool. nice. That's yeah, really very cool. cool. So next, it's, it's next. You want to? Oh, do we have another image here? We do have another image. Okay. So this one. Oh, yes, we do. This is Respite. It is a wet plate collodion on aluminum, and he has some words to say about that one, too. And that's got to be her refuge. She's drugged that chair out there. I love that image. <laughs> A few years back, I took an 8x10 wet plate collodion field workshop with Joni Sternbach. It was a pickup It was a pickup truck full of cameras and chemistry, three photographers, Joni and our model, the LGBTQ artist Alana Farrell. After a few plates were made, Alana grabbed a folding chair and plopped down in the road to wait for us photographers to decide what was next. I immediately noticed his resemblance to the old Max, Maxell cassette tape advertisement from the 1980s. You remember that? The guy in the chair and the speakers and they're, they're just blowing yeah, his hair back. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I lost my place. <laughs> I asked <clears throat> I asked if he would stay put for a shot. He replied, sure, this is easy. I love the complimentary textures of the clothing, his hair, the grass, and the asphalt. When I look at this, I always feel the tension of waiting for something to come down the road. Nicely done. Yeah. Great story. Yeah. Ron is a very creative character. Yes. Very All good. Right. Thank you. So Sharon Covert. This is her image. It's called The Silent Understanding. It is part of the 27, and she lives in Tinton Falls, New Jersey. Just beautiful. So these are self-portraits. This is all a body work, didn't I? I yeah. She was in the story. Call for I think uh, she was. Yeah, yeah, I wrote a I wrote a yeah. story about one of her images. Yeah, so they're all her. You yeah. know, she she sets it all up, and I think in her backyard, and runs back there. And, yeah, they're they're beautiful. Yeah, very cool. Thank you, Sharon. We have another Sharon. So this is Sharon Royal, uh, who lives in Seattle, Washington. Uh, the title of this is uh, Guardian, and it is part of the twenty seven. Uh, the the sanctuary part of this to me is the sanctuary of people being able to play act, <laughs> right? Okay. You know, throw care, throw care and caution to the wind and do whatever the hell you think you need to be doing. Yeah, there's a lot of mystery here. I'm not sure what's going on. It, it reminds me of scenes in New Orleans. It does me too. Yeah, yeah very much. And this one is called Refuge. And if a beach ain't a sanctuary, I don't know what is, mm -hmm. right? There they are walking out. Very nice. Yeah, I love that image. But this is by Susan Bryant. Susan lives in Clarksville, Tennessee. And this is part of the 27. The title is Once Again Winter, The Woodland House Number Three. 
And it's a creatively done literal interpretation. Which yeah, like she does that. double exposures in camera and she just loves this scene and she's done it in all seasons. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah they're all beautiful. So Susan Huber. Susan Huber lives in um, Salt Spring Island, British Columbia, Canada. Doesn't that sound interesting? Mm -hmm. I'd love to go there. Um, this is called The Tent. It is a contact print of platinum palladium. And yeah. It's, right. It's fiction to ring, so you need to get into that sanctuary right there. Okay. Perfect. Say so. I love that. <laughs> Thank you, Susan. Thomas Ladd. He lives in um uh, he lives in Providence, Rhode Island. And the title of this piece is Amherst, Massachusetts. It reminds me of Thoreau's cabin on Walden Pond. There may be Walden Pond right behind it. You think? There. I'm, I have no idea. <laughs> that's what I saw when I saw it. Okay. It's a nice image. Thank you. Absolutely. So Tracy Whiteside, uh, this image is called Repentance. It is part of the 27. And Tracy lives in uh, Elburn, Illinois. She had a few words to say about this, Kevin. Repentance. We often envision a sanctu sanctuary as a refuge from the strains of daily life, a tranquil ha haven where we can recharge. Personally, I discover sanctuary within my thoughts, engaging in introspection and self-discovery. The young woman depicted here navigates heartache, embracing her emotions to facilitate healing and growth. Really nice. Yeah, it's really beautiful. Really image. nice, yeah. Very nice, thank you, Tracy. And last but not least, we have Virgil Wait a minute, where'd it go? I lost it. Virgil DeBasey, and Virgil lives in Valparaiso, Indiana. The title of this is, I've got it somewhere and I've lost it. Remember the title of this? I know it's Mike. This is Mike. Mike. And, 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 yeah. So, wow. <laughs> the dude <laughs> appears to need some sanctuary. I, I think it's just a wonderful capture, and it, you know, it looks like it's in a, a commercial building in a bathroom somewhere. He has a series of these images yeah. of this man that are—they're all really, and really. It good. looks like he's—he's he's in some distress. Yeah, it's—it's it's, it's a, it's a great, great capture. Yeah, thank you, Virgil. And we have one more, even though that is the last image. I, I'll okay. One more in here. So I just wanted to talk about fruition. We have a, um, another call for entry out right now that um, <clears throat> it's Kevin and I and um, Liam McDonald uh, with Fuse Studio. And it's a, what do you call it? Uh, artist in residence right. um, call for entry. So we're looking for uh, bodies of work that are. In, in the, in the, in the. Making stage. Making stage. Yeah. I mean, they're they're close, but they're not really ready. Right. And they need to have some, basically, some uh, presentation. And a and a calm place to do it with all the necessary accoutrements. Yeah. 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 Leah is a is a um, encaustic artist. Right. And so um, she is going to host the winners. There's two for five days, and you can come there and use all of her toys. And, and, and her expertise and her expertise and stay there and it's just a wonderful thing so if you're at that stage with a project that you need to finish then we're the place this, to play is, this is the, the thing for you <laughs> this is the thing um it's the call is open until the end of april all right yep and so that's it okay well thank you everybody you can stop the sharing now okay thank you yeah, thank so you. Thanks everybody. to all who entered. We greatly appreciate it. Yeah. And we'll we'll see you next time. Let's go have lunch. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Adios. Bye, everybody. Bye.